Hi guys, it's Natalie. I know it's been a couple of days since I made my last video, and that video was a tiger, so I'm showing you guys the finished tiger. Since last video, I added some whiskers to the tiger, which is something I didn't have time for in the last video, but I added those anyways. And for tonight's video, I'm going to be doing something a little different than what you're used to, which is just me coloring. Um, I'm going to be going through some of my old sketchbooks and drawings from late middle school and all of high school to show you guys how I've progressed as an artist and I'll, along the way I'll definitely be be sharing a lot of tips and tricks for practicing and learning how to draw and helping yourself grow as an artist. Uh, this can be really relevant for you, for you if you have children and if your children are interested in drawing just ways that I guess you can encourage them or you can share this video with them to show them like how to keep drawing and like I guess be inspired by your environment and like, become really passionate about it and improve your technical skill of course. So again this is the tiger that I drew last time I'm just showing you guys because I finished it by adding the whiskers and I think it'll be a good time to begin. So where, where I'll be beginning with my old sketchbooks is in eighth grade. I found this sketchbook in my closet today. It is from my art class I took in eighth grade. Uh, let me show you guys. It's really old. But, uh, I took art classes in middle school. I took it in sixth and eighth grade. I couldn't find my sixth grade sketchbook, but I have my eighth grade sketchbook to show you guys. Uh, everything in this book was done in art class, so I had like drawing prompts and things like that. But this is just to show you guys like what I did in school to help me draw. And then after this, I'll show you guys some of my drawings that I did. So here's just some of these. Uh, in art class, we had this prompt where we had to draw abstract shapes and create like this really cool picture. I forgot exactly what it was called, but we did that. And this is something that is a lot of fun when drawing and it can be really relaxing. I think uh, one variety of this is called Zentangle where you just have a shape like a flower or an animal with tons of patterns and everything inside of it. But yeah, this is something that I did in eighth grade as part of my art class. And one thing my teacher had us do was draw like a random shape and then flip it, rotate it, and move it. It was kind of interesting but a little frustrating having to draw the same exact thing over and over again. But it was a good way to help like focus on how an object moves in space, which is pretty relevant. And then like, we did more activities where we had to like trace around our hand and do stuff like that. Um, we also had to do sketching exercises with lines and shading. Um, and this is one exercise that I think is really important for young ones trying to draw the face. Uh, what this is is where you take an egg, or like a plastic egg, that's what we used in art class, and we use that as an approximate shape of the head, and we would draw it. Uh, right here, this little light bulb, we had to draw as a reminder, as like that's where the light source is, and we had to shade accordingly. And you can see the little lines, they signify where the eyes, nose, and mouth should be. So for all of you guys trying to draw faces proportionately and have like the, a good face shape in your drawings, this is a really good exercise to look at. Um, I, I did it in eighth grade. I'd say it was really helpful. Uh, looking back at all these sketchbooks today whenever I was preparing for this video, they brought back a lot of memories from art class and just little things that could definitely help a growing artist. Uh, this is a sketch of a school. I think we did this around Halloween time. And during this art class, we did a lot of face sketches. Uh, back here, back then, I wasn't really good at drawing faces. Um, but, however, the faces that I drew from like actual like reference from looking at a person, they were a lot easier to draw than like drawing from memory because a lot of my memory drawings and like non like photo based drawings they looked a little odd and well to me now, but back then I thought they were pretty good. But here's another uh, face drawing exercise, I guess. I don't really remember too much about this. Um, I, we would draw eyes and different the parts of the face all the time in this art class. Uh, for you guys who are late in the coming into the video, I'm just going through a lot of my old sketchbooks and artwork to show you guys how I've progressed through the years. And I'm also giving tips on how you can help yourself improve with art or help your children if you want to. 
Um, uh, right now, this is my eighth grade sketchbook, so bear with me. The cool stuff will be at the very end. I'm really excited to show you guys my current sketchbook because I love it and I'm really proud of it. But, um, oh, I really like this hair actually. <laughs> but uh, one big piece of advice I give to you uh, if you have children that are getting into drawing, especially if they're aged around middle school or entering high school, I would strongly recommend purchasing them a sketchbook that they can take with them to school and bring it to their classes and draw because like during I guess like downtime or like extra time that they have at school they can sketch in their sketchbook and make good use of their time and plus they can show their friends and it's a good conversation starter with people at school and teachers and things like that. Uh, that's what I did. Uh, I got I bought myself a hardback sketchbook. I would recommend getting those for your kids at school because they, if the kid puts it in their backpack over and over again, pulling it out, putting it on the desk, it may suffer some wear and tear. Uh, spiral sketchbooks don't last that long if you're putting it in and out of bags and you're not careful with it. So I would recommend getting a hard one. You can get them for under $10 at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. And another thing, if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask me. Um, a lot of questions that would be really good for tonight and relevant are questions regarding, um, I guess, uh, like, but tips and tricks for progressing your own art abilities and how to like help encourage your children to draw or they help support them. So here's a color uh, sketch I did. This is all in art class by the way. I don't know what kind of markers these are but this is something that I think got me into drawing with markers because I right after like all the stuff in the sketchbook I'll show you guys some of my marker work that I did. So Here's more sketches. Uh, one thing I like about art classes in middle school is that they're good for like, a, a young artist because they help you like learn about diverse subjects and be able to draw them so you're not just focusing on drawing one thing such as dogs or cats or like cartoon characters, things like that. In art classes, they really force you to draw things outside of your comfort zone. And by doing that, you can learn. Uh, this was an exercise that we did in art class where I believe the teacher, he put up a picture of a sculpture or something. It was of these two elderly people and we had to like draw a cartoon about it, I think. So I, I made mine about like these angry people who were mad at a kid for blaring music. It's really silly. Uh, another thing we did was still life drawings. Uh, I think this is just like of a bunch of junk food. I don't remember it too clearly. There's more of that. Uh, my art teacher, he'd always like have us go quickly, draw one thing, move on to the next, keep going back and forth between different drawings. Like They're quick gesture drawings. They weren't supposed to be detailed towards perfection, but they're mostly, we, we did them just to get an idea of the shape and how objects interact with each other. Uh, I think this is one of like my first self-portraits, I think. In art class, we had to like draw a self-portrait, so I guess I drew myself with like a greenish color and some color around the eye. It was really cool. At this point, like in, in late middle school, I was exploring color a lot, and trust me, my sketchbooks, they get more and more colorful as I move towards the future, and I really hope you guys stay to watch my current sketchbook because I really love it. But here's some animals that I drew in eighth grade. Drawing animals is a great exercise for drawing because you have to draw so many different shapes and lines and like so many different textures and it's a great way to adapt to new things to draw. Here's a scary beaver. <laughs> this lines. Okay and it looks like that's the end of my eighth grade class sketchbook. Now I'll show you guys some of my drawings that I made in 8th grade or immediately after 8th grade. Um, in 8th grade I was dabbling with different art styles. Uh, you can definitely see like a lot of like cartoon or anime influence in this. Uh, this is like, this is during 8th grade I believe. I, don't, I didn't put a date on it. But this is also around the same time. Uh, one thing I want you guys to pay attention to whenever you look at my drawings and as I progress is I pay attention to the noses because like I the way I drew noses it definitely progressed and you can see like where I learned different things about the structure of the nose and how I applied that to my art. So 
Um, at this point, like I wasn't really sure on what I wanted to draw. I made this right before I started my freshman year. It kind of works off the style of this, but I guess there's more shading. Again, like look at the nose. It's it's very cartoonish. You can definitely see the cartoon influence, and I guess that was okay because a lot of my uh, uh, like inspiration for drawing, I guess, came from like looking at cartoon characters and wanting to make my own, I guess. So I would draw a lot of that. Uh, but before I got to the very end of eighth grade, one thing I drew a lot of was I drew a lot of cartoon characters. So I'll show you some of these. Uh, these are two Pokemon. This is whenever, uh, I forgot, okay, this is in 2012, so I was probably in eighth grade here. Uh, I really like drawing cartoon and video game characters, so I drew Pokemon here. And this is actually one of my first pieces I made with markers. This is of Shadow the Hedgehog, which is a video game character from the Sonic series. And here is a Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, the marker that I used for this is Copic marker. Uh, it's a very high quality color and I, I use this a lot. I still use it today, however, like, I used to use it more. My, right now I use more paint, but uh, this was a great marker to use for drawing cartoon characters because it gave you a solid color and you can blend rather easily. This one, I think I didn't use Copic for all of it. I think the only Copic part was the red because, or the red and the skin, because at the time I only had a couple of Copics before I bought more, but a good way to introduce yourself into using markers, and this is something that's really important for kids who are looking into buy, purchasing markers to color with, I would recommend buying yourself only a couple of Copic markers, mostly the skin colors because they're really hard to get with off-brand cheaper markers because they don't look that well. But as for like black, yellow, red, or gray, things like that, you can buy cheaper markers and use a combination of the two. And it helps. It really helps you learn how to apply colors. Uh, this I made whenever I had a bunch of Copic markers. This is all in Copic, so I could blend everything. But it, whenever you're a beginner, I wouldn't go out and buy a huge set of Copic markers. I would buy a couple and blend it in with like, I guess like other markers. I know if you go to Hobby Lobby, and around where they sell the Copic and the Prismacolor markers, they always have like a box of like 36 colors or something, and it's usually fairly cheap. And it, like, these markers, they're, they're not the best. They're almost like Sharpies, but they're usually called art markers. So, like, those are good for practice, but like, as you progress, you get more Copics. Uh, someone asks, what are the girls drawn with? Um, these two are drawn with Copic markers, uh, and I also used colored pencil for the hair. I don't know if you can see it right here, but if you go up closely, you can see a lot of colored pencil right here that I use on top of the Copic marker to create a hair texture. So, uh, one thing I also did, hold on, let me go through the rest of this. Uh, this is something I did at the end of 8th grade too. I never finished it, I don't know why, but like I, it looks pretty good for like compared to a lot of my other sketches I've done at the time. Again, I don't have an exact date on this, but I can just say this is all pre-high school. Uh, here's another sketch I did uh, exploring different styles. Um, I also drew a lot of eyes at the time, like here are some of my eye sketches that I made. Um, these, yeah, these were marked 2013, so that was definitely uh, second semester of eighth grade. But you can definitely see how I, how, I guess, how I drew the eye and made the eyelashes change because this one is like, they're just a bunch of little lines, whereas this, they were more controlled and like structured. So I've always loved to draw, draw eyes, and that's just more evidence for it. Uh, here's something else I made in eighth grade. This is... I guess it was just using color with faces, and you can see like I had this general drawing style of really large eyes, extremely slender noses that were shaded heavily at the bottom but lacked the like a realistic nose structure. Uh, I also like try to draw my own like fantasy like characters, so this is one of those examples. This is I don't really know what this is, but I found it in the pile of old work today, and I thought I'd show you guys. So now I'll be moving on to my sketchbook from ninth grade, 
and this is a little bit better. Whoops, hold on, let me get it together. Okay, so in ninth grade, uh, some of the things that we had to do is we had to draw a bunch of like drawing exercises and stuff. A lot of them I'm skipping over for the sake of time because a lot of them they're similar to the things I did in eighth grade. Um, oh, someone asked, how do you get the glossy or glossy look? Um, I don't know which piece you're referring to, but this one right here, I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but there's a lot of glitter. What I did was I used a gel pen and before the gel pen dried, I smeared it around with my finger to create, like, yeah, I guess you can kind of see the glitter. But I use that to create like a glossy glittery effect. Uh, but this is one of my favorite things I did in my art class of freshman year was I sketched Albert Einstein, uh, the teacher. He had all these like printed pictures of faces and we had to choose one to draw. And I really like it. There, there's a lot of things that I would change, but it was a good way to study like how like wrinkles and folds react to lighting and how you can shade it. Uh, let me find some other things. Uh, one thing in ninth grade, I was still like looking at like cartoony kind of things and I almost like tried to design like my own characters or something. I don't exactly know the story behind it because it, it was just kind of like, I guess I, I just drew my own characters. There was no story or like purpose really behind them, but it was mostly just to have them drawn. And this is one thing that I drew. And like I also tried to design clothes and stuff for them. And here's some more examples of that. Uh, here's another eye that I drew. Uh, I really like drawing eyes a lot, and you'll continue to see that. Uh, here's some, I guess, a hair study that I did. Uh, this is really nice, I think, still to this day, where I use a lot of like Copic marker, the brown markers, and then on top of that, I use colored pencil, and then I also use some white paint for some highlights. And Here's another example, but it, like, I'd say that I definitely learned a lot from doing little things like this, and I strongly re uh, encourage you guys to do things similar to this in your own sketchbooks where you focus on one particular subject, but like, if you're looking at humans or drawing faces, don't just go for the whole face at once if you want to focus on refining other things such as hair, eyes, lips, noses, things like that. So here's just some figure sketches where I would just like, one one thing that's fun to do when you're drawing the human body is just to look up images online of different bodies and how they pose and then from there just sketch them roughly. Uh, don't spend too much time on each sketch otherwise you'll get caught up in the imperfections. Uh, here's more sketches. A lot of my things from my freshman year sketchbook is very incomplete. There's mostly like rough sketches everywhere. And at this point, again, I was still like trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do with art because I was looking at like design characters, drawing humans and eyes and coloring. It was kind of all over the place. All right, here's a page of noses I did to practice. Uh, one thing I noticed that was really interesting was like the way I shaded noses from an angle where like from the side of it, it looks really good, but up front, like there's a lack of understanding on the structure of the nose from up front. Uh, you'll see in my later works that it, it changed a lot. Um, here's some lips that I drew. Uh, again, for and if any of you guys missed it, this is from ninth grade, my freshman year of high school. So, and if you guys have questions, please feel free to ask them. Uh, I see a lot of you are asking for my Instagram. My Instagram is in the link that is found in the description of this video. You can go there and you can see the work that I do today uh, because I don't have a lot of it with me since for all of you who have been following me on here on Quirky Mama and on Instagram, you would see a lot of my work so you have an understanding of what I do today. Uh, here I have more sketches and these eyes I drew are really pretty. Uh, again, the noses. I don't know exactly how it is to explain them, but I guess I'm missing some shading like right here on the nose that I could have drawn. Uh, this was a self-portrait sketch because we had a project in my art class to draw a self-portrait. I'll show you guys the color self-portrait after I go through the sketchbook. I know in the past a lot of you guys have asked me in my videos if I've ever made a self-portrait or if they can see one. and. 
I said yes, but I didn't know where it was, but I did find it today, and you guys will see it. So here's, I think this was a frog. Uh, I remember making this one. This one was a lot of fun. And as you guys can see, like my col my sketchbooks are getting more and more colorful uh, here. I, I think I just used Crayola pencils because I didn't use Prismacolor pencils until until recently, really. Um, I say like, I got my Prismacolor set that I used for you guys around Christmas time, so it really wasn't that long, but beforehand I would use like black or white Prismacolors on top of ink, which, I mean, it, it satisfied me, but I do like coloring entire pictures with Prismacolors. Here's more faces that I drew. As you can see, like, the style has definitely changed from the beginning of the year up until more recently in the year. Well, not well, this year, past. Like, this is 2013, 2014. Let's see, here's before ninth grade and then into ninth grade, like, draw like this. There's more eye sketches. Uh, one thing I drew a lot is eyes. Uh, one thing, I would definitely find them on my papers all the time, like in school. I'd always doodle eyes on the, side of the sides of my papers. It'd be really interesting to see, like, a count of how many eyes I've drawn doing that. But that's another reason to get your child a sketchbook in school, is like if, so they, all their drawings and doodles, they don't end up on the sides of their notebook papers, but instead they end up in a sketchbook where they can see them and they can keep their drawings. Uh, and the pencils that I've used for all this, I see someone that is asking, these are all just you know, like mechanical pencils or regular wooden pencils, nothing too special. So here we have like, more sketches. Oh, and I drew a few little Disney characters here. There's Pascal from Tangled and we have Mickey Mouse right here. I have another picture of Mickey Mouse that I drew that I think you guys will really like. It's of like a cute little sorcerer Mickey. Uh, that'll be in my next sketchbook, so stay tuned for that. And here's just more characters. And that was my ninth grade year. Uh, oh wait, I forgot to show you guys the artwork from it. Uh, most of the coloring practice that I did was drawing, or as all the coloring work that I did was on paper. Um, Here's one thing I did with color. These are, this is with Copic marker. And let's see, this is 2014. So yeah, this was in ninth grade. Uh, let's see. Here's some sketches. Oh, this one I think was, yeah, this is a rough sketch for that. Um, at my school I had a light box, so I was able to draw a sketch ahead of time and then like trace it with the light box and then color it later. Uh, here's another sketch I did. I really like how the eyes turned out on this and how she's smiling. I thought this was really cool at the time because like, it was really hard for me to make smiling faces and stuff. Uh, this is something else I did in ninth grade. Uh, I forgot exactly what the project was for, but I really like the sky in the background, uh, painting backgrounds. It is, like, I've never really been a fan of it, so I would always like make abstract backgrounds, but this one is actually sky. So here's my self-portrait now that I did. It's kind of difficult to see it, but I don't think I can adjust the camera too much. But here, I'll move it around. Uh, this I made with markers. This was for my ninth grade self-portrait project. Uh, I'm thinking I should definitely make a new self-portrait of myself to like update with my physical looks and my artistic skill. I think that'd be really cool to show you guys. Uh, here's some more things I did in art. We were we were told to work with uh, paper and like make collage work. This is something that can be a lot of fun, especially for kids and even kids that aren't necessarily into drawing. But uh, take pieces of newspaper and or tissue paper and cut it up, plaster some glue on it, and you can make like really cool shapes and you can like, color in large areas just with paper. And the way that uh, here I use red and then I use white tissue paper. It creates like, I guess, a shaded color, which is kind of neat. And here's one more thing from ninth grade. It's just another sketch. So now I'm going to move on to my sophomore year of high school, which is 10th grade. 
Um, this is my sketchbook from it. It's the same type of sketchbook as before, except this one is a little bit more worn, so I had to use some black duct tape for it. Um, here's uh, here's a Pokemon that I drew. This is Gudra. I was still into like that cartoony look, so it was something that I drew a lot. Uh, just so you guys know, uh, if you see little purple sticky notes throughout these sketchbooks, it's just to hide information that shouldn't be shown on Facebook, such as like names, email addresses, school addresses, things like that, because I do have those written in my sketchbooks. Or if there's something that may make an audience member uncomfortable, I also hit those with purple sticky notes. But here, I did a lot of sketches of just faces, and this is, I forgot exactly when I did this, but hmm, I don't remember doing that. So, here's another page. Uh, I really like this eye that I did right here, still to this day. It's one of my favorite eyes. I just think like, the way it was shaded and the area around it, it just turned out so perfectly. And... Here's like some more nose studying that I did because noses took a really long time for me to get right but now I'm like really happy with how I draw noses so like, again guys just keep practicing and like if you're a young artist and you're watching this or like you can tell your kids this as well if you become frustrated with something like don't worry about it because what is the solution to that is just practice and time because it's not about where you start in this, not where you start as an artist, but what you become and what you turn yourself into. And to get there, you have to practice a lot. You have to draw things over and over and over again and spend tons of hours on it. But it's definitely worth it in the end. So here's more sketches of people, things like that. Uh, in this sketchbook, I definitely use a lot more color uh, as before. Uh, this I used watercolor with. Um, one thing I I would like to make a video on is about like different supplies and what's good for like learning to draw with. Uh, one way of coloring your pictures, and it's, this is really cheap too, is just to use watercolor paint. And you can get these at Hobby Lobby, Michaels. Uh, there's two ways of doing it. You can get the liquid watercolor, which can be messy, or you can get watercolor pa palettes which are like, I know Crayola makes a, a famous one with like eight colors and but if you go to Hobby Lobby you can get ones with like 36 different colors on it and all you do is wet the little palette and you use your brush to, to scoop off the pigment and you paint with it. Uh, I also have these really cool brushes that you fill the body with water and you squeeze them slightly to release water from the bristles and it makes it really easy to paint. I should definitely do a video on that because uh, definitely for young children, this kind of paintbrush is amazing. It prevents a lot of messes, like having to rinse your paintbrush off in a little cup of water and things like that. And you won't really have to worry about most of the time your paper getting too wet because the water is very controlled. So I'll show you guys some more. There's more sketches, more faces here. You see the noses starting to take a more realistic shape and structure, which is kind of exciting. Uh, the sketchbook, you can definitely see, like, apart from the others, there's, like, a face on every page. At this point, I definitely knew that with art, I wanted to draw faces a lot, and, like, drawing faces was my favorite thing to do. So, I continued with that. Now, here's some, like, food drawings. I, if you guys saw my cupcake video, uh, or if you, I mean, if you haven't seen my cupcake video, you can check that out on... Quirky Mama under the videos tab and then go under to uh, drawing with Natalie you can find a video of me drawing a cupcake. Uh, someone says watercolor pencils have you tried them? Uh, I have and in fact I think I use them in this book a couple of times so whenever I see them I'll definitely let you know but watercolor pencils are another thing that I would strongly recommend to you if you have kids or even for yourself because it's it's a I consider it to be a somewhat like a cleaner way of painting because at first you can apply a dry pencil coat and then if you add water on top of it you can blend everything together which can make the process somewhat easier and it's just an interesting medium to explore and I highly recommend you guys get it and another thing is like my older sketchbooks they have like a lot of pages with just like random doodles and they're very incomplete. Uh, here's my faces that I drew, and I still like to draw a lot of, like, just random characters, I guess, just to, like, 
practice on designing like different hair and clothing. It's kind of cool. And there's a lot more of that. But here's an example of just drawing characters. Uh, this one I thought was really neat. It's like a space alien kind of thing. Um, there's this one character I have in mind that is somewhat resembles. I can't really think of it though. It's been so long. But uh, here's more stuff I did. This was with marker and then I went over it with pencil. I don't know why I did that. Like all the black here. Again, like a lot of these sketches, I don't remember the entire part, thought process behind like making certain decisions on doing this. But uh, again, something incomplete. Uh, this I did with ballpoint pens, like you know the regular, I guess like ballpoint pens that you buy in a package of ten. Uh, that's another medium to work with whenever you're at school. Um, just you know, blue, black, red uh, ballpoint pens. You can actually do some pretty cool things with them. Uh, to all of you artists out there, and of course I recommend this to your children too if they're interested in drawing, just uh, explore different types of art supplies and art mediums because you'll never know what's out there really until you try it all because there's just so much to look at. You have water, within watercolor, you have watercolor pencils, you have different types of watercolor to use, and like just within like one, like you would consider one type of medium there's a lot more inside of it and each has a very different process and I consider some processes more enjoyable than others and just remember part of the fun in art definitely comes from the process and using your art supplies to make something cool so I would recommend exploring everything that you can to find something that really fits you and something that's just really fun okay here's Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Uh, one thing I did a lot of was like practicing drawing realistic people, so I would find like portraits of people online and draw them. Uh, most of them weren't in my sketchbook, however this one was. Uh, this is one of my favorites. That was one thing I would always show people if they looked at my sketchbook. Um, yeah, I would strongly recommend doing that as well. Like Draw pictures of people if you're interested in drawing faces. Don't just stick to your own memory of eyes, lips, and noses. Just look up pictures and reference them. So here's more uh, sketches. Now this is something that was kind of interesting. I took, oh by the way this is in Crayola colored pencil. I took the pencil, shaded it, then I took an eraser and kind of like swiped down the page to create almost like this lighting effect. And I think it looks pretty cool. I'd like to explore, explore it a bit more. But that's one thing that you can do. Like, I'll try to share with you guys like just little tips and tricks and like ideas, I guess, for working with different art supplies. Because I mean, you never know what you'll find. Uh, one thing that I did a lot of whenever I was younger was I watched a lot of people talk about their art or watch people make art and just see like what little morsels of like drawing knowledge I could pick up. Um, here's a face sketch. Well, here I drew a little piece of sushi. <laughs> uh, here's some more eyes. Uh, if you see little notes like this, these are like, and they're dated, these are like art class prompts. We would have to do things like, for example, we'd have a presentation in class about like, define good art, for example, and we'd have to like, take little notes on. It is a good exploration because it, it's more than just like the technical side and like creating the art but it has to do with like the meaning behind the art and how we perceive art and how we look at art and things like that. So that's another thing to focus on. Um, whenever you're taking art classes in school, usually you don't explore that until much later on. Like I'm talking about like 10th, 11th grade is whenever you really start to like sit in art class and question like why do we like art? What is it about art that makes us happy? How do we make our art meaningful? Things like that. But honestly, I wish I explored things like that earlier on because it's just something that's good to grow up with and think about while you're creating art and discovering your path. Uh, here's more eyes. Uh, I used Copic marker around this to give it some color. Uh, this was another Pokemon I drew. This is for my little sister. This is Dragonair. Um, here's a face I drew. I think, I don't really remember what I was doing here, but I think after I colored with colored pencil, I was adding some like hair, I guess, and 
I think I got a little sloppy right here, but oh well, sketchbook. You're supposed to make mistakes. <laughs> um, some more pages. Uh, here's another face. But again, like, look at the noses, guys. I've progressed so much from drawing noses. Here's more. That's really what this sketchbook is. Oh, here's a face that I color. It's kind of, it's somewhat cartoony, but it is shaded at the same time. And I thought this was really cool. I use Copic markers, I believe, for this. And the hair is colored black, but then I used the color pencil to create a little bit of a shine and reflection on it. And here's more just random pages. Here's some fat cat. <laughs> Um, I, okay, one thing that's still hard for me to draw is hands. Like, this probably took me a really long time to draw. But, yeah, hands I need to work more on. I, I'd find them really frustrating, but again, like, if there's something that's frustrating you or you can't get right, just practice, practice, practice. Uh, here's a Mickey I was talking about earlier. Uh, this I used Copic markers to draw, and I also use an ink pen to outline it. I think he's really adorable. It'd be really cute to have like a sticker or something of him. And here's a cat I drew. It's really cartoony. I think at this point in ninth grade, I took like a month or so and decided I was going to try and dabble back into like the cartoony style with outlining and things like that. But I don't. Like, it didn't take off really because I discovered that just like drawing things realistically was, I guess more fun for me, so I continued with that. Uh, this one I used Crayola colored pencils to make. Uh, I would love to make a video sometime to talk about like cheaper colored pencils like Crayolas and stuff and little tips and tricks on how to use them and get the most out of them because like while they are not the best quality, they are affordable and I know that like purchasing good art supplies can be a struggle for many and it's something that is difficult to get. I was fortunate enough to be given a set of Prismacolor pencils by a friend as a Christmas gift, so that's why I use them. Uh, I know I always make videos with Prismacolor pencils, but I would also love to make a video about using Crayolas because, I mean, one, like, they're not the most affordable pencils, and two, for a lot of younger kids watching, it would be cool to show you guys, like, how do you work with Crayolas because if you're younger, like I'm talking about like young, young children, it's better to let them use Crayolas. I wouldn't buy them Prismacolors, that, that's a little much, but uh, especially if you're just getting into color pencils and you're not sure that this is the right medium for you, I would dabble with cheaper quality pencils. Now again, here's some more cartoony stuff that I did. Um, I outlined everything very heavily, used a lot of bright, bright, vibrant color. Uh, this I did, I did the hair with pen and pencil, I think, and then I used pencil here. And another thing, if you're drawing faces and stuff, go ahead and be crazy with the colors. Do blue skin and pur I mean, pink hair, it'll be fun. Like, it's just a way to explore coloring because, like, the shading is still the same, but it can be I mean, kind of tiring to use the same colors over and over again, so, like, change it up. It's a lot of fun. Here's more stuff, really sketchy. Here's a little dog. Oh, uh, this drawing I really like actually. It's just a figure sitting, but I just really like the pose and the way I drew it. So, yeah, and one thing, if you guys have old sketchbooks and old drawings, definitely look back at them and you'll be reminded of many things that you tried to draw or like things you thought were cool. And maybe you can look back and get inspiration from your past self. Uh, this was a, a art club t-shirt that I designed for school. Uh, we still use this t-shirt to, for today. Uh, there's still like a box of them left, so I don't think we're ordering new sh shirts soon because we still have old ones, but uh, it was fun to design. And in my art club, we voted on it and like that one won, so that was pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that's one thing I do at school is I, I'm in art club. I'm currently a co-president uh, co of it because we have two presidents right now. Um, it wasn't really voted on, but it was more like decided by the teacher like who should run it. So that was, that was an honor to do. Um, if your child goes to a school where they can take art classes or join things like art club and they're into art, I would strongly recommend that they do it because 
and it, it's definitely a class that's important if you have an artistic side to you because it, you can use it as an outlet to just draw, paint, or just mess around with art materials to make something for yourself. Uh, just more colorful stuff. Uh, more sketches. Sketches. Oh, here. This I really like. And this is a cat that I drew. He's really cartoony, but I thought he was really neat. He's like an Egyptian cat god. And I just like all the details I gave him and stuff like that. I, I would love to make a color version of him sometime, but I thought he was pretty cool. So yeah, there's a lot of faces here, lots of sketching, things like that. Well, this I thought it was really pretty. Uh, I did. Uh, the, this is, I think, one of the one point in my, I guess, like art career that I decided that I really like doing hair in an abstract form where the hair is just really flowy and it's free of gravity, I guess. But I just really love the form of the hair, so that's where I began working with like, hair that wasn't like, realistic. So you have more things here. And at the end of the sketchbook, I started drawing things and like writing about what I was drawing. And this is something that was somewhat helpful because it helped me put a lot more thought into my artwork and a lot more meaning. And that was just to like talk about what I was drawing and express my ideas. And you'll see a lot of that in my most recent recent sketchbook, which is the next one. But like, it's something that is very helpful. Uh, it can be a lot to do if you're younger, but like, it's one thing I would recommend doing. Some people don't like writing in their sketchbook, and that's understandable, but it's something that I would definitely try before you decide you don't want to do it. Um, just write about your process and the thoughts that are going through your mind whenever you're drawing something. It can be really helpful for reference later and just to kind of like check where you are and how you come up with these ideas. Uh, I was trying to plan certain pieces that were a lot more meaningful, like there was something about, this is about like the environment and the impact that fossil fuels make on it. And I tried to like, personify it in a person because like I really like drawing and painting people and one thing you'll see a lot of in my most recent sketchbook are like cutouts of faces and stuff or like other artwork because I'm starting my my junior year I started the IB art program which is for international baccalaureate and to turn it to get credit for the course you have to turn in a, like all these set components and one of it is a, a workbook with your progress shown and you also have to analyze different artists and artwork within your your workbook which is what IB calls it but it, yeah I definitely started a lot more writing in my most recent one do some more sketches then I also like looked at things that were more symbolic that I can implement into my artwork. Uh, you'll see a lot of that in my newer sketchbook, but like for example this, I looked at platonic solids and some of the symbolism that goes behind geometry, which was something that's always captivated me, just geometric patterns in general. I really like it, so I wanted to implement it into my drawing. So, and that's the end of my sophomore year. Uh, I don't really have many works from my sophomore year laying around. A lot of it is on my Instagram, so if you guys want to look at that, uh, scroll back a bit and look at uh, 2014 and 2015 around there. Like the second half of 2014 and the first half of 2015, look at that and you can see some of my work from sophomore year. But I did find this. Uh, oh, another reason why I don't have them is because they're all sitting in my drawer at school right now. and. Like it's summer, no one's at the building, so I couldn't get them, but here's a drawing that I did. This I did with ink and a quill. Well, I mean, the shaded part I did with a, with a brush, but all the detailed points and the hair strands I did with a quill. It was something that was a lot different, but I thought I'd give it a shot because I could make like, really thin hair strands. So that turned out really well, and I was happy with that. Again, like explore different things, like if you haven't thought of drawing with ink and quill yet, try it. It can be fun. 
Okay, now here is my most recent sketchbook. And this right here, uh, I'm still working on it. I started it at the beginning of my junior year. However, like it's not filled up completely yet because I've had less time to draw throughout the school year since I, I started the International Baccalaureate program, which is a rigorous uh, academic program focused towards like well-roundedness and education and things like that. So I had a lot of schoolwork to do, but uh, I, and plus my artwork, it was more focused and I put a lot more effort into pages. So it took a lot more time. And so it was more focused on quality over quantity, which is perfectly okay. So here's like the cover picture of my book. I really like this. I did this, this is the first thing I made in this book. And I just use ink pens and markers and I just made flowy hair. You know, I always like to draw hair really flowy in this free state. And here's some arms I drew. It was kind of neat to see how the arms like interacted with the arm, right, with the, I mean the hands interacted with the arms and how I could shade it. Um, I see, I did a lot more writing in this. This was a concept for a piece that I was making. It was about like, just the concept of ideas and, and how they come about and things like that. Uh, I haven't finished this piece yet, but I plan to this summer because I, I started repainting the face because I learned a lot more about shading faces that I wanted to apply to it. Uh, this is what the sketch for the painting. Uh, this I scanned and I blew up to be really large and I put it on a canvas and I began painting it. And the writing in this is mostly just about like the concepts and the exploration of ideas and like the actual art process itself. Like what paints I used and like how I felt about the painting going through it. Like, oh, at this point I decided the eyes weren't like, Oh, wide open enough, so I adjusted that or something like that. And here I just have like some quick writing about cicadas, more sketches. Uh, this page right here, this was a exploration on the concept of the golden ratio, or like the divine ratio. Um, it was it would take a really long time for me to explain it all to you guys, but basically it's like a supposed like divine ratio that represents beauty inherently and it's interesting because this ratio can be found between like human bones on the body which is what I looked at here in the hand uh, the length of your finger bones can when compared to each other they form the golden ratio which is really interesting because it bring it, it falls into like the question of like is beauty inherent or is it really in the eye of the beholder you can find the golden ratio in lots of natural things such as like fruit, uh, seashells, and even the galaxy above. Uh, if you're familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, which is counting with numbers and each term in the sequence is a combination of the previous two, if you were to create squares of it and make a spiral, uh, the spiral that you see in seashells and the galaxy and stuff, it's in the golden ratio and it's supposed to represent like divine beauty. So uh, this is one of my favorite pages because it it combines a lot of like, like mathematics with art, which is something that's kind of rare be and I, I enjoy it a lot because I, I want to major in computer science and it's something that I do a lot of work in. So whenever like the two overlap with each other remotely, I get really excited about that. Um, here's some sketches I did around Halloween time, like some schools. And the cat fox and here's that for my art club we were invited to make a sculpture for the day of the dead festival in my city so i was just sketching ideas and like shapes and stuff for that uh this was a artist exploration that i did it was basically like looking at an artist and like writing down the qualities of his work that i enjoyed that this artist worked a lot with color, so that's what I talked about. And here I applied it to my own drawing style in my own work. Uh, and for IB, we have to print out a lot of like other artists' work and put it in to show as examples because that's something that they grade us on. But uh, you guys can't see the entirety of the pictures because I don't know, I feel like the subject matter might have made some of you viewers a little uncomfortable. So I just decided I'll put sticky notes over it. Um, but if you want to look at stuff like that, like my Instagram, I don't put sticky notes on things on my Instagram, so 
be warned, but also, I guess, be curious like, if, you want to, if you want to see everything. I personally, like, nudity and art, I know it's something that is, can be a touchy subject. I personally, I don't care. I think it's part of it. I think it's part of the beauty, but I know that this, like, broadcasting on YouTube, it needs to be appropriate for everyone, I guess. Uh, again, like, I personally, I don't have a problem with it, but in case any of you guys do, I have the sticky notes. Uh, here's some more notes, and I have, like, occasional art reflections. Um, here's another, like, artist reflection I did on a different artist. Oh, well, two artists, in fact, and I just talked about their work and what I liked about it and how I could apply some of the things that made their work good to mine. Uh, here's a, a written expression of Copic marker that I did. Uh, this is really interesting. I'd love to talk more about it, but I don't really have all the time in the world to do so. But uh, this is a, a written uh, account on like how I color skin and what makes it pop. Like for example, if you look at these two spheres right here, the one on the left just uses earth tones and the browns to shade. However, this one I added some of these other colors like violets and blues and greens to enhance the skin tone and it just looks so much better. And I have this all written down right here and I find it really helpful because I can look at my process and reflect on it and like I mean I don't really need it to like learn how to do something because I've already learned it but here I'm just writing it down. But it's really neat. Here's some more sketches and coloring that I did. Uh, again I, I also have pages like in between my expiration pages that are just purely sketch based. Uh, this is something that I did uh, Whenever I went to the museum, I took some notes on an exhibit. Uh, this is one thing that's really helpful and I would recommend for like, everyone studying art. Whenever you go to a museum, actually like take notes on what you're looking at. And like, take notes on the subject matter and like, the meaning of the art and things like that. Not just the, the, the physical qualities of it. Um, and if you have like younger children, I that don't. I mean, I, I feel like writing a sketchbook may be a lot for kids who are like, say, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. But if you, uh, one thing I would recommend in the first place to expose your kids to art is just like plan family trips to the museum, and while you're there at the museum, just like, start a lot of art conversation with your family about like art. Talk, don't just talk about like the things you like and how like a color is here and a line is there but also talk about like what the artist is trying to say and the purpose behind the artist making the artwork. Now uh, that's what I write a lot about in these museum uh, journals. Uh, it, it's really helpful because I can go back on this and look at each picture that an artist has done and like see draw different I guess like draw inspiration from it and see like how the artist was able to do that and like on top of being inspiring you do learn a lot. Uh, one thing I'm really interested in including in my art is like the concept of space and space exploration. So that was something I was looking at. Uh, I made this painting of an astronaut woman with blue hair. It's really interesting. You can look at it on my Instagram. Uh, I took notes on it and like why I wanted to explore this concept. And here's some more notes. Uh, this is about humanism and art. I didn't finish it yet. And Here's one thing we have to do in IB art. It's a compare and contrast between two pieces of work. And here, I I compared uh, David's Michelangelo with Auguste Rodin's The Thinker, and I, I compared the visual qualities and also like the meaning behind it. Um, one thing that I learned a lot from just writing about art and writing out my ideas is that there's so much more meaning in like powerful thoughts behind art than you would originally think because I used to think that like these two sculptures they were just purely for aesthetic reasons and their aesthetic qualities but like further exploring it I learned so much more about it I mean I could go on talking about it but I don't have time for that um, here I have just some more sketches of faces and things like that and one thing that Oh, these are unfinished notes. I took notes at a museum, but I, I wasn't able to print all the images to like, officially like glue them in and write everything in pen. So I did bullet points. Uh, here's more things. Uh, one thing that you definitely notice is that 
like what I like my goals in art and the art that I make is definitely more refined than it was in the past where I would explore like tons of different things at once but now uh, my art it really focuses on the like, humans and their interaction with the world around them that's kind of like, a broad theme to cover everything because I'm making pieces about like humans and technology humans in space things like that but I, all my art really it focuses on things that are human and if you want to see more examples of my work that I do with that check out my Instagram uh, this I turned into a painting. You can see the finished painting on Instagram. It's only like this part of her body though. Just like the tops of her hands and, and upwards. Uh, this is one of my favorite sketches that I did. I really like it because it's rather simple. But the way that the hair folds over her shoulder and like just the coloring of her face and the lines and everything, I really like it. Uh, this page I guess was just like loose thoughts that I wanted to write down, things that I could implement further like the these little writings they may not even be connected to the pictures but it's nice uh, this was an expression for something that I did in a recent piece uh, I actually posted a picture of, of the finished painting on Instagram not too like a couple of hours ago if you guys want to check it out but it was a piece on like how humans interact with technology and like the future of technology what it holds for us so I used like humanoid robots to help like personify that that concept um here's my sketches i think that this right here yeah this i continued on this page a couple more pages from, from onward uh this is what i turned into a painting again you can see that on my instagram but here's my sketches i did it's a heart and an avocado <laughs> so here's my sketches and sometimes like if you see a quote that you like somewhere, like jot it down in your sketchbook. That's something that I do sometimes, like here's a random quote right there. But you can look back at it for inspiration and things like that. Uh, but yeah, there's that again. More art. Uh, this, I, I remade the expression of platonic solids from my sophomore year sketchbook because I wanted to redo it with like, more refined writing because yeah, back then, like, like, it was mostly, like, just key ideas, but this, like, drew out into more complete ideas. And I want, I also wanted it in my newer sketchbook because it's something that I'd like to further explore. And this was, like, just an exploration of the city of Paris. Uh, I went to Paris my sophomore year and on this one trip to France through EF Tours, and it, like, it took a lot to go, but, oh my god, it was the best experience of my life uh, traveling going to a different country and there's just something about Paris that it has like this very specific aesthetic and atmosphere to it that like I wanted to capture through visual like through visual drawings and things like that so this is what that page is it was really enjoyable for me to make just to draw about it uh this was I, I know at one video I talked about blending prismacolors with coconut oil. This is an example of a piece that I did that with. The skin right here, I used coconut oil to blend. You can see it's still somewhat oily, but it was actually really interesting and I'm actually very impressed with the turnout because like if you look at, if you touch it, it's not very oily. It looks oily, but it, it's very well blended. And so if you guys want to try using coconut oil to blend, blend prisma colors, I would recommend doing so. Uh, Bailey, what I use for black and gray pictures, I use black, white, and gray, well, occasionally gray Prismacolor pencils on top of graphite. So just regular pencils. So I do some more sketches. I did some figure drawing. And this is a an exploration of something that I recently did. I was exploring like the concept of freckles and blemishes on our bodies. Uh, you can see the finished picture of this on my Instagram. I was so proud of the result. I love it a lot. And I hope you guys too do as well. Uh, here's another thing I'm working on currently. And that's the end of my most recent sketchbook. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know it's a lot different than what I normally do. Um, it, I know like a lot of you guys look forward to drawing and stuff. I'll be back at it tomorrow though, don't worry. Um, but this I, I thought was important to show you guys and I know a lot of you guys wanted it. So I hope I inspired some of you or like taught you guys a few things. 
that like, not ju just you that not just you learn about but also your children if they're watching or you can tell them about this later show it to them but it's just something that I like talking about I like talking about making art and just being an artist in general and how I can encourage others to do the same uh, if you guys have any questions I know that like I was doing a lot of like, concentration on my workbook and talking about it so I didn't answer like every question and plus I don't see them on the screen at all times but if you guys have a, a have a question to ask please send me a direct message on Instagram the link to that is in my uh, is in the description of the video uh, I'll get back with you um, I think it's important that you have your questions answered especially if it's about like learning to draw or like where you get like certain supplies or things like that I can definitely help you so I'll be back tomorrow same time 930 central and thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.